she's laughing about our beer marketing will grow on you. Yeah. Yeah. No, she 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 liked it. I was just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Ready, yeah, whenever you're good to go. Oh, yeah, this is group uh, 24B. Gleason, I'm the project manager. I'm Garrett Rude, I was the CFO. And I'm Noah Pashley, I did the marketing for beer marketing uh, this semester. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and thank you guys for coming out this morning. You know, it's uh, kind of hard to talk to people, so we wake up at 10 o'clock to get out here. But we want to go ahead and thank you in advance. Um, this semester we were lucky enough to work with Larry Gustafson and Wes, and along with our uh, advocate, Professor Burton, and work with their um, product they're about to release to market, which is a heating and cooling product. Um, with that, we came up with a problem statement. We have yet to find a one-size-fits-all solution for bootstrap small businesses to track, locate, and visualize interest in their product through the study of internet activity. Many people have a bunch of different meanings of what bootstrap is. Um, this semester, how we defined it is right here. Um, you know, in layman terms, it's when a company doesn't have a lot of funds to play with. They don't have millions of dollars to go and uh, pump into marketing or go ahead and build overhead. Um, a good example of this would be like a college student coming out of college, trying to start a business. Um, no money at all. How do you do that? Just generate money and constantly keep pumping it into your business. Big issues for these small bootstrap companies is cost, time, and effort, all of which are very limited. Marketing costs, um, Iowa State did a study a couple years ago saying that for all businesses, regardless of bootstrap or not, it's going to take for the first two years about 20 to 30 percent of your yearly budget or total operating cost. Even if you purchase a company that's already well established, you're still going to be using 10% uh, percent of that cost. Online services that can do marketing for you can get up to $1,000 as is. And as a bootstrap company, you really don't have those funds to be doing that. So marketing and advertising is progress for these businesses, which means that you're going to trade shows, you're going to county fairs, you know, getting your product out there, by yourself, and also that includes Facebook, Twitter, really doing all the work yourself instead of going to these marketing companies, which you don't have money for. So the big question where that comes in is, where are your customers? You really don't have any idea. You're just trying to get your product out there. So with that, we'd like to introduce the application we've been developing that we feel solves that problem, which is Hotspot. I'm going to talk uh, a little bit about the, the general um, the general functions of our, our software application that we developed. Uh, we'll get into more of the specifics about the, the product a little bit later. Overall, what the product allows users to do is to track interest in their product through their already set up website. It doesn't have to be anything complex, but it, it allows, the track, allows the owners of the small business to track that interest, find out what cities are, are interested in their product, and then it'll return the demographics of that area and it will populate a list of similar cities with those similar demographics so that they can predict maybe future interest. And it will also provide a list to the owners of retailers in that area that are similar, that would be selling things that are similar to their product. So in our case study, we're using an HVAC company. So it would return people that sell air conditioners or furnaces or something like that. It's going to return a list of those retailers with their address and their phone numbers, stuff like that. Throughout the semester, we focused on one, one key thing. This is our research question. And the big things to grab out of this are location-based data, bootstrap small businesses, and demographics. All of them were, these three things were really the key points to our entire project, but primarily demographics. Demographics was the big thing that we focused on because we felt there was the most potential for demographics and there was kind of the most interest in demographics because there are so many different aspects to it and there's so many different kind of pieces that have to work together to really use demographics effectively. 
the way we handled this situation was we used our analytics software, which is PUIC, and we kind of grouped that together with another, uh, another software, which is the National Broadband Map, which is a database. We brought those together, and PUIC essentially allows us to um, find the cities, and then the National Broadband Map gives us the demographics of those cities so that then the, the company's owner can look at those demographics and determine, well, this city is very similar to a city that I'm already in, so I know that this city should have, should have similar results. And so that's kind of the, the aspect of research that we're looking at with the demographics. The testing that we've done so far this semester has been focused primarily on just our application and just our software. We wanted to make sure that it was as usable for anyone who accessed it as possible. So we wanted to, we did a survey that was kind of with our product testing and allowed people to get on and just use our application in its basic sense to make sure that every aspect of it worked so that even somebody that didn't know much about technology could easily get on there, set up an account, add a website, and it just be going with no problem. Then the, the more, I guess, complex stuff with this, uh, we got from our stat department, and this function here is used to determine potential sales of a company. But right now, this function is solely for like our case study, so it would be based on an HVAC company. And pretty much what the formula is determining is your potential sales are a function of these four variables, which are income, number of household members, time of year, and then climate of the area. So if you're looking at a city like Madison compared to Miami, Florida, you gotta take into account the climate with uh, HVAC. So, but this is all still research. Um, for us to fully test this function and make sure that each of these variables actually matter, um, it would, it's kind of a lengthy process. It would probably take at least six months to test it fully to make sure that each aspect actually works um, and find out the significance of each of these variables to find out if they're actually part of it or if we can exclude them. Uh, the way that we're gonna access a lot of this information is to put the analytic software that we've developed deeper into the, the, the company's website. So it would be on like their product page or something like that to make sure that if somebody just clicks on a link and ends up at the site and then realizes that it's not something that they actually want, that they click off and then all of a sudden, I mean, if you track that data off the home page, that user's not at all what you want, but you've tracked them. So if you put it down onto the product page, it um, makes sure that people have to work down to it and actually show interest in your product. All right, so uh, we created our application using uh, PHP, HTML5, and CSS3 code. Um, we also used responsive design using Twitter Bootstrap, which makes it so that you don't have to develop that application specifically for an iOS device, which uses its own segment of code, and then you have Android devices, and then you'd have to design it for that. Um, what it does is it automatically resizes to whatever um, screen you're using, and it also um, makes the functionality work differently for those screens, but so that it works the best way it can. Um, we also used MySQL for, to create the database. Um, the APIs, which stands for Application Programming Interface, is kind of like the bridge between your application and a database. It pulls that information from the database, and that's how you get all the information that you need. So we used the PWIC ABI, uh, a nas the National Broadband Map API, which is pulling the, kind of like the US Census Bureau information, so like charts, graphs, data like that and stuff. Um, and then we also used Yelp API for um, pulling like contact information for users and addresses and things like that. <coughs> All right, so this is PWIC, um, and this is kind of what the charts look for what our um, application is designed for. Um, and what it does is it, it tracks new users um, and the location of those users. So if you have a lot of people coming to your site that are in Chicago, that's an area that you're going to want to look at. Um, and then it will also return all the data from that area. So you'll be able to see if that's maybe an area that has a lot of houses where you wouldn't want to install HVAC units on. Um, it also records the page views, so it's more accurate. So if somebody jumps on your page several times, it's not keep, it doesn't keep counting them as being a person who viewed your website. Um, it also records the average time that they were on your website, so if they weren't on there very long, then you know that they might not be that interested in your product. Um, we decided to use PWIC instead of Google Analytics because it, it offers a lot more accounts. So for our application, it makes it so that we can um, 
have a bunch of different uh, users um, using our product and we don't have to worry about a limited size because it's unlimited because what it does is um, for PWIC you can install it on your own server so it's not running off of like like Google Analytics runs off Google server so it limits your amount of accounts where when it runs on your own server you can have unlimited accounts um, I mean based on your bandwidth for that server and then it also um, makes it really easy to customize um, so that's a great thing about that. Um, and what Hotspot does is it queries all that information and populates a list of businesses um, that you can contact um, from those areas of interest. And, uh, Nicholas will show you a demo of the product. All right, so we're going to go through the more technical side of things while Noah uh, demonstrates. So one thing to note uh, first off is that all of our forms in our site have both front and back end validation, which means there's JavaScript on the front end to, um, just like this, to let the user know if what they're entering is correct, if, if it will even be accepted once it goes to the server. And there's also server server side validation uh, used to protect against things like SQL injection because we're using uh, MySQL as the database and PHP uh, to interface with it within the database. So when you first log in, it'll bring you to uh, just a dashboard, which will just have gener general information about whatever site you choose. And then we can go into the data page, and this is where it will list all of your websites uh, that you've set up for your account. So, so you see here we have a few just sample ones set up, and it'll give you information like the title, the URL that's being used to track that website. Uh, just That's a total views column, so, um, and within the last year. And then it gives you a few uh, actions that you can do. You can look for updates, you can edit the settings on your website, you can view the tracking code, uh, or you can delete it. So we're going to go ahead and look at what the actual website form looks like. So this is where we did uh, most of our usability testing. We thought that the forms were the most important part, uh, or this form in particular, because uh, if this isn't set up correctly, if you don't understand what you're doing, then the app isn't going to function, right? So we got a lot of feedback, like um, this form field doesn't make sense. We don't know what it's looking for. We don't know what the validation message is saying. Um, so we kind of we gave some general info on the on the right side there of what goes in each spot, and we fixed some validation. And so right here, if you see the hotspot settings, this is where this is where you set up uh, how you want to be notified of cities. So for for this one, this is Beard Marketing site. We put we want to be notified whenever ten visitors uh, within the same city uh, visit our site in the, in the uh, most recent month. And then we can also go through and set up uh, what retailer information we want to see. We want provided to us within each notification. So we put for keywords, we put beard and hair, and those will be used when, when it searches for retailers. And then you can also customize what demographic information you want to see. So we'll go ahead and update. And then this right here, this is the actual code that's used to track um, visits to your site. So what the user will do is then take this They'll paste it um, in the bottom of each page that they want to be tracked, uh, right before the closing body tag. So this can be kind of confusing for um, people who aren't uh, familiar with web development and stuff. So there's also some instructions, and if you're using a content management system, which most websites will be using, there's uh, plugins to set them up automatically. And so we'll go back, and we're going to I'll talk about a little bit how, uh, how the actual process works in finding retailers and demographic information. So what happens is, when somebody visits your site, it stores their uh, IP address, and it matches that against a GeoCity IP database um, to track city, state, country. Uh, and then what the threshold that you set in the hotspot settings, it'll match um, visits against that. So if, if you have more than that threshold uh, within the right amount of time, then what the app will do next is it'll send the city information to the to Yelp, the Yelp API, which is used to find retailers, and it'll use your key terms that you set, and then it'll send information to um, the National Broadband Database to um, to actually find demographics for each area. And because this uh, consumes a lot of bandwidth, every every time you run it, we have it set to just run once a day uh, on a schedule. But if you would like to uh, update it manually, you can click the check for updates button. And you see that uh, we have a notification here. So there's, um, 
And so when you open up the notifications, this is what you see. It says uh, that hotspots found a, um, the hotspot has been found in Norwalk, Connecticut. And based on the key terms we specified, beard and hair, it's found a couple of barber shops for us, giving us general information. You click visit site, and that will bring you to their Yelp page. And then it also lists the demographics, age, age distribution, median income population, and gives us a, a few graphs for the actual site and how the visits have looked over the past month. And then also just to demo kind of what the power of Twitter bootstrap. You can see that as we resize the site, and this gets down to more of like an iPhone or uh, smartphone size, uh, we don't have to, with Twitter bootstrap, we don't have to sacrifice functionality. Uh, you can see that it doesn't actually make the page smaller, but it rearranges the elements on the page so that uh, you can still use it on any device. All right, so that's kind of a general overview of the main functionality of our app. I'm gonna talk about uh, the future research. So one key thing that we looked at was, like I said, the demographics. So really the big thing for us is we still need to do more research on demographics and really the power of demographics. There are a lot of aspects that go into demographics. I mean, you have income distribution, age distribution, gender, ethnicity, all kinds of things. And so what we basically want to look at is, can you, I guess, predict interest in a given city off of one of those terms? Can, you, can a business look at just the income distribution of a given city and say, well, any city with that same income distribution will still have potential benefits? Does it take two aspects? Does it take six? So essentially what we want to see is how in-depth do you have to get into demographics to actually predict that potential interest in a city that you haven't even started a marketing campaign into yet. I'd like to give special thanks to a few people. Um, Larry Gustafson, obviously our sponsor. Terry Burton, our advocate. Um, I'm not going to try to pronounce small things. Stat guy. Um, helped us a lot with uh, the formula and figuring out what exactly we needed to look at to make our project statistically relevant. Um, Joe Schreiber was a, a great industry contact. We talked to him a lot about a lot of the things that we got kind of stuck on and making sure that we were kind of on the right track. And we'd like to thank Reactive Design. Um, they helped us and we kind of joined together to make both of our lives easier, I guess. <laughs> so we'd like to open it up to any questions. seen that is any of this like lead generation or does this tool just simply tell you where you might have success marketing your product okay so it's not so much lead generation um, the way we look at it is you're already gonna have a small bit of marketing out there um, you're are gonna you're gonna have to have your own website set up already obviously and then um, it's I think that it's gonna be most effective if you actually have some marketing tools out there already. And what this basically allows you to do is just track the interest off of your website. So you want as much traffic going to your website as possible for this to be, I guess, most effective. Mm -hmm. And then from that, this will help you figure out retailers nation nationally, because it's gonna be hard for you to set up a national campaign for your marketing. But if you can get the word out there about your product, then this is gonna help you go to a national scale, contact retailers in the area rather than you happen to go through the list of all of the retailers that you could contact to get your product there. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It cuts out a lot of the groundwork and stuff. See, we're a graphics group, right? <clears throat> so is there, a, is there a dry marker up there? On the yeah, board? absolutely. Yeah. There's one over here. OK. okay. Is that the good one? Can you guys quickly sketch a model of how this software functions, like, you know, the user, uh, this does this, this does that, that does that. Um, oh, okay. Like a, like a, like a flowchart, almost? Yeah, yeah. What a, what a concept for programming. Okay. Yeah, there's that, there's no, no. Flip it. That's um, gross. So, so can you diagrammatically show me either a user-centric or a person maintaining site-centric interactions and map the, the, the software so I kind of understand? Because I heard a server, and I want to know what the server obligations are. I want to know 
Uh, is this a product to be sold? Is it something that you're going to maintain and acquire a user service fee for somebody to use it? You know, what, what are you planning? So first off, just take one of those and show me something. Okay. okay. So just to be sure you just want more of a flow of how the program About works. About five different things. So first, just pick one. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so it'll start with uh, whatever the threshold you set in the hotspot settings. Um, By the way, is hotspot trademarked or copyrighted? Word. As far as I know, when we did our research to find out because we thought of it and I knew that it sounded familiar, hotspot is generally just a wireless, it's a generic term, just a generic yeah. term. And yeah. so, how much does it cost to copyright this? <laughs> that, I, that I can't tell you. I don't know. <laughs> that don't, we don't pursue that. Okay. <laughs> does anybody know if, if hotspot is used? As I know that there's an inbound marketing company that could arguably be a kind of competitive that's called HubSpot. It's called what? HubSpot. HubSpot. The inbound marketing okay. service. Well, I was just getting ready to search hot, hotspot.com just to see if anything came up. Yeah, I looked up hotspot and pretty much the only thing that I could find yeah, was I just wireless of, hotspots. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah Amazon and everybody saying that they yeah. have these. Yeah, so that's kind of interesting. T-Mobile has a thing uh, <coughs> for like to their high screen internet. Yeah. 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 Wireless internet. But have they copyrighted the word? Like that's how they actually <laughs> That's what they actually call it, is their hotspots. So if you buy it, it has a hotspot spot C or TM on it? I don't think so. See, that's no. I think they have a name for them, and it's their like their hotspot. It's sure, their name sure. and then Verizon hotspot. It's just a technical term. Yeah, I know. And it, may, it may be you know, one of those things where you can't. Oh, you have a question. I'm sure we can go ahead. I can try to answer. Yeah, what you're doing is you're, you're, he's tracking the software. Okay, so yeah. it, as a user-centric component, in other words, how do I acquire your software? How, or, or how do I engage with this company? So, so that's kind of like reaching out towards like a business model. So like well, no, we're, we're this company yeah. who you've developed this software for. How, how do we get it to you? Yeah, do we, get this, do we buy the software? So, do we? Do you guys run this? Yeah. We hire someone to do this. Yeah. So, so it, what? Would, it would be done off of our our server. So in a way, we would be maintaining it, but then at the same time, we're giving the users the software. They're installing the the API, the hotspot, like that, onto their product page, and then they're accessing it. So the user is doing everything, and all we're basically doing is maintaining the servers. So, 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 it, your perception of this company and how to generate revenue is in in the sale of the software and a user fee for the service to maintain. Mm -hmm. on yeah, it's the like server. a monthly fee. Yeah. Okay. Pretty much. Yes. Right. And to get it out there, you know, obviously we're gonna give it to Let's uh, for free. No, I mean, don't do that. You should charge for everything. Okay. Your time's but, really money. Okay. We need to like get it out there and make sure we have numbers to back it up. You know, this can generate profit for your company and totally market our product based on those numbers being, you know, here's what we found with, you know, companies A, B, and B. We were able to, you know, drive the revenue. Yeah, you don't have any test cases yet is what you're saying, yes. correct? Yeah. yeah. And so you need test cases to set up your own market. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, but from a functional point of view, which is what's being put up there right now, uh, you can diagram this thing so that I, as a potential customer, can look at it and say, oh, I understand. Mm -hmm. You know, the copy-paste thing's pretty simple. Yeah. I mean, I, I think if you don't even know HTML or anything else, you can edit that pretty simply. Cut and paste is not a high-level function. Right. Uh, and, and I noticed you had some different methods for uh, different admin uh, techniques, right? I, I see that. Yeah, for different content management systems? Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's there's plugins for the three that we mentioned that will actually just do it for you. You just oh, okay. you install okay. the plugin, you just give it that code, and it'll... Yeah. So the training overhead for a company to use this is very low. In your yes. opinion. And that's the goal. And that's that, how was, we that, was, yeah. that was the goal. That's why we did the testing that we did to make and sure that somebody could put this on and just jump right into and it. And these were, this test population was non web literate people. It was both. Okay. I mean, it was, yeah. it, it, was, was both. it was pretty CGT open. People, yeah, I think some CGT people, we also got some respondents that weren't, though. So, so I think that. Were they technically savvy people or I think, novice? I think that they could be either. That's okay. something that okay. I don't, for the original test, I don't think we looked so much into that because part of the reason we wanted to make sure that we still got some technolo technologically savvy people right. was because we wanted people to be able to look at it and tell us what problems they had. Sure. 
So if somebody got onto it that didn't know anything about it, they would just say, well, I had an issue with this, but I can't, I yeah, can't see, explain you, you what it was. You weren't function specific. You were only user interface specific. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. Fantastic. Okay, so lay it on me, guys. Okay. All right, so this is where, uh, this is the hot spot settings that you uh, specify, which is the area, um, the period of time, and the amount of visits. Right. And so what this will do is it will match it up against the GeoIP database, which is the IP tracking, and then it'll, uh, so it'll cross-reference this to see if the threshold is met that you set. Um, and if it's not, it'll just, it'll keep going daily. It'll um, keep checking. If it is met, it'll go to, um, it'll send it to, or it'll generate the city info based on the IP. And then it'll send that to both uh, the retailer and demographics API that we use, which is Yelp and Broadband Map. Yep. And then it'll get information from both of those, create a notification, send it to the user, and the user has the option to maybe contact those retailers or to just ignore it if they think it uh, wouldn't work for them. So so the contact the retailers, that was the, the data that was listed on there where you found a couple barber shops. Yeah, yeah. Right. Exactly. Which you all exactly. desperately need. And, and so on that, how do I contact them? Do I just do like click, click on, on it? Is it a button? Is it yeah, a, yeah. Yeah, um, it you gotta pull it back up. Yeah, that's all right. That's fine. Well, what it is is uh, it automatically fetches the address for you. And if there's a phone number listed on the Yelp, uh, page on their Yelp page, then it will also <laughs> list that. And but the link oh, there bad. will bring you straight to their Yelp page, which has all the information and, and, and rate it and reviews and so on. How is data populated in Yelp? My bad. I'm trying to get it up. How, how does Yelp get that data? Where do they get that from? Is that you said something? Was that the census group? Was it's, that the that was the Are National you talking about the page? actual retailer information? They're yeah, getting it from their own page. So it's like yeah. if somebody has like an account on Yelp, yeah. it's going to find them through that and get all their information. It's like a there. yellow book. So like okay, just, but, but the question was how do, how do businesses get their information in Yelp? How does that occur? Uh, I don't know. A lot of times it auto populates. It kind of like Google Maps puts businesses in there and stuff. Yeah, but see, that's what I'm curious about. In other words, you're making an assumption about the data report without validating the data source. So that's what I'm curious about is how does Yelp get that stuff? And I mean, do they read it from Google? Do they get it from the Census Bureau? Where do they get this stuff? And then the other one was the Piwick or Piwick or whatever. Piwick. Piwick? Like Buick? Sure, I guess. Okay. So Piwick? That, that almost sounds regurgitated. Exactly. But, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, and where does Piwick get their, their data? Okay, so that is, um, Puick, it doesn't actually do that much for us. It kind of just um, processes some things in the background. What what Puick does is it tracks the IP, which is um, okay. the same way that anything would track an IP. Sure. But then we used a, um, a popular uh, Geo City IP database. Um, so is it generating those charts? Puick generates the charts, yes. Generating those charts, yep. okay. So it's, it's the frequency and how long you get yeah. and all that stuff. Okay, so this is just like a yellow page listing pretty much. Right. And I get that. And if they had a URL, would it appear there? Yeah. The, Any okay. information that, it's, it, that is given to Yelp Generally is put available. on Yelp. Yes. Right. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Okay. It's not using any like back channels to find information. It's stuff that people have put out there. Search for Burton Pools on Yelp. Burton Pools. <laughs> Chicago. I'm just curious. Just take you, yeah, you started in Chicago. There's several of them, aren't there? Okay. I just want to see. You've got a review, though. Yeah, I know. Someone's going to also close every season. I've never had an issue. I thought that was bad. Yeah, we're pricing is reasonable. Not as cheap as Walmart. You need to look at the prices, apparently. No. <laughs> Not as cheap as Walmart. No, it's it's, it's quality, not the price. Okay. So I, I'm just curious because we've never submitted anything, right? So so they are perusing some database, populating this thing, whether it's yellow pages or whatever. Okay. So I get it. Uh, and and what about the API on this? Was it difficult to use? Was it simple? Was it just a cut and paste code or what, what was it? Um, it was relatively simple uh, compared to some other ones that are out there. Um, Essentially, it gives you a lot of options, but what we did was we specified city, state, country, and the key terms, and that's how we searched. Okay, search so if I, if I wanted this different search, then you just you just change your hotspot settings. 
within your software. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, cool, yeah, cool. Okay. I'm, I'm taking all the time if anybody else has questions. See, when you identify the regions uh, that you're targeting, obviously then the, the traffic that you get to your site is geolocated, mm -hmm. and you're able to correlate that to the region. But you're picking the regions prior to that, arbitrarily, mm -hmm. correct? Correct. So you're identifying perhaps Indianapolis, Chicago as your target markets, and then you're able to correlate all the traffic that's coming in from those locations. Is the, the for lack of a better term, the lead generation you're getting, is that done purely just off of your initial selection of that market area, or off of the visitors that you're getting to your site? It's based purely off of the settings that you specified. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, you guys set up the uh, like location when it looks up by the city. Did you ever consider doing like a GPS like within 20 miles of the city or anything? I don't. Did you do that to you? I don't think that we necessarily did that specifically for the reason that. We wanted it to, to, to be more like if it's if um, like we have it set to ten users within a city, so that just means that if any ten users in a month in a single city does it, so it's not necessarily like we want to track ten people within Lafayette or twenty miles outside of Lafayette. So it's more just how many people within any given city around the nation have done it. So we didn't, I mean, we didn't expand it to like you know a city plus twenty miles. By the way, that's the wrong address for our company. Oh, it is? Yeah, that's an old location. <laughs> Apparently, they don't update very quickly. Well, that's what I was going to ask. What is the currency of the state? <laughs> Apparently not. You know, and and so, so I think there's a vetting uh, that needs to be done for these data sources. So here, here's the million-dollar question in my mind. If there's an API, does it really make a difference in your software? In other words, did you see a huge difference between the Yelp API and the Puik API? Is there a huge difference in the way? No, I mean, APIs pretty much function the same way. So yeah. if, if we found a different retail yeah. locator API, we could easily Absolutely. switch to that if we thought it was more accurate. Yeah. Which gets me to another set of questions about, you, you did review the census data. Mm -hmm. Yes. What did you find? Well, uh, do you mean like about like using it? Yeah. Yeah. Do you mean, yeah, yeah. Well, I know that you ran into some issues. They didn't have a direct API. They, would, they didn't release that themselves. Um, what they do is, I believe they release um, the actual database information like like six or six months or a year behind schedule to other people for other people to use, and that's that's like what uh, the broadband map broadband map does. Okay. So it has so it's like June 2012, I believe, is what that used. So there's no no reason to solicit the source in this case because yeah. you're saying it's already out. We're, yeah, yeah, we're essentially using the national broadband map that we're using is using the census. Okay. So they it's kind it of there. an yeah. outlet. It's just it was okay. easier okay. for us to use that. So, so your determination was that there was an intermediate system already there that was easy to hit hook to, and so you did. Yes. Right. Very much. Yes. And then this Puik instead of Google, right? Yes. Speak to me about that. <laughs> okay. Um, I actually made the whole thing with Google Analytics, and it was pretty much finished. But um, we we realized a few limitations um, as we kind of finished up the app that were really just uh, would in the future wouldn't have worked so well for us. Um, for example, you could only have 25 websites listed at a time, or 25 users, um, and the API was quite limited um, because it all goes through Google. Uh, they get to choose what information you can and cannot take from the analytics, and that's all stuff that we that was like really hard to find in research before we started until we actually started developing it. Um, so we decided to switch to Puik. I mean, it's essentially, it does the exact same thing, but it's open source. It allows you to download and install the whole thing on your server, so you have access to every file um, within that analytics software, and you can change anything you want and, sure. have, and create an unlimited number of accounts. And, and so did that revelation come from your, your engagement with Joe Schreiber? No. No, it came more from just the, the actual development phase that we okay. were going through. Okay. We were developing and then kind of hit that. Enlighten me a little bit about your contact with Joe. He was more just... It was more just about advice on how do we develop this application without getting too far in the, ahead of ourselves. So, you know, we were working with HVAC, keep it there for now. Right. You right. can always grow. But yeah. if you try growing too quick, 
you know, there's going to be so many problems when you're trying to develop an application. So your corporate philosophy is that your engagement with companies will evolve the software. Yes. Okay. Rather than trying to make a, a you know, silver bullet that solves all the problems. I think the overall goal, I guess the like future goal would to be would be for this software to work for anyone. But to start out, we understand that you can't do that. You can't make something that's going to be all encompassing right off the bat, especially when you don't you aren't sure that it's going to be fully functional right off the bat without any. So your company is more focused on utility tool development than in a software large scale distribution. Currently, yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah. As of now. Okay. Okay. What did Joe say about the software? Has he seen it? No. He hasn't seen it. You really need to have him see it. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And get some comments from him. that are returned to you, do you have any sort of uh, CRM backing that? So tracking contact with those leads or any planned integration of that data with Salesforce, for example? What do you mean by CRM? Uh, customer relations management system. Like, so for, for, like Salesforce. Salesforore. For example, you get, you so. get uh, a list back of you know, all, all your leads in your target market. Uh, a CRM would track your That's communication true. with <coughs> on a lead base. It's like a social network within our application with these retailers. Like using ours as a plugin into like Salesforce. No, well, you would you would augment Salesforce. And you would pr potentially be able to export your data into Salesforce, or vice versa, or just provide that functionality. I mean, it'd be yourself. possible. That's not something we looked into. Probably. Yeah, it's kind of out of our scope for this project. Sure. But yeah. yeah. So, it would just be very beneficial to, once you have those leads and you start contacting them, to be able to track and manage those communications. Okay. Yeah, the software that we've researched, they had that capability of you know, being able to you know, keep a network of everyone you've you know, contacted, you know, be able to transfer data that way. Um, I guess that's kind of why we went for this scope. It's something that, you know, through research, we haven't really found anything to date like that. So yeah. we really want to tackle that issue. Yeah, this is certainly the first step as mm -hmm. a future evolution. I was just curious if you had implemented anything oh, yeah. like that. Yeah, I mean, we have like uh, legacy projects in this class. So if somebody wanted to like continue on with that or something, they could definitely continue trying to do that. So. Well, well, we intend to use it. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to do your, your beta testing for you. <laughs> And then we're going to have thousands of questions about why doesn't this work? <laughs> what if we did this? You guys, you have, you've stepped in, you put your pinky in the fire. You, you, you know, you aren't singed yet. We need to put you in a. Do you have a question? Yeah, yeah. okay. I just want to make sure I'm understanding this right. So the, the point of the uh, hotspot is to essentially get rid of like the third party marketing firms, correct? Or like no. limit their needs. Not right? why. It's li I guess more so it would be limiting their needs. You still need to have. I mean, if you wanted to go out and use a marketing firm to do a marketing campaign, mm -hmm. then by all means go for it. It's just going to help drive traffic to the website that this is on. Well, so this the, this keyword with this presentation is bootstrap. Yeah, like because you also bootstrap. mentioned about how you would like potentially like sell the product, but if if it's supposed to be for bootstraps, why would like how would you stay competitive with the other comp marketing companies out there that already do the same thing? And also provide more features and more. Uh, I can't think of the word for it, but um, it's not necessarily about uh, compared to what we've seen. Um, a lot of them, a lot of the fairly similar products also involve um, like the payment options for those also involve consultants and and they pretty much set up the site for you. They kind of do everything for you. And the the idea behind this is that it it doesn't. It's not like extremely feature rich so that uh, just about anybody can get in and use the basic functionality like where it is now and you don't need that third party to okay. um, interface between to make sure you're using the software correctly. So it's more do it yourself. Kind of exactly. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And so then the software just basically takes in their parameters and then generates the adoption for them. Exactly. Yeah. And it can, it can run automatically. You don't need to kind of like go, like once you get your settings. All configured. You don't need to keep checking every day. It'll it'll do that automatically for you. And and I think the other word, DJ, besides uh, bootstrap, is local. That it's it's for local intrusion into the market, not 
even statewide or nationally. And we're just looking for a very specific opportunity. Yeah. yeah. And what we what we did with the retailer and demographic information is that's available if your target area is like city. If it's if you have a small target area, then it provides that for you. But if you if you set your target area to like country or region or state, something like that, then it won't it won't bring that information back to you because that's not gonna be very useful. Like the people who would do that are people who just kinda want general information about visits, not necessarily are looking to contact retailers. They just want to use this as an analytic software kind of. But so, but the main focus is is local. Yeah. So how do I get from here back to your software? Is it up and running on? It's loading. There we go. Okay, <clears throat> that's that's the obvious, but there's no uh, user-centric method to go back where you were within your software. So you have to go from. I mean, we could set it so that it opens oh, in a new window, window but um, no, he's saying like. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're saying essentially that if somebody clicks on I want to run the retailer, query, right? So how does I find this data now? I want to go back and run another query. So you want it so you that open essentially it would open a new tab for every retailer, so that you're not necessarily going to, um, you're not going to have to like oh, go back or anything like so that. So if your marketing wants, wants to run another query, mm -hmm. they just go ahead and reconfigure that, right? So they go well, ahead. If you're, if so, if, are you just wanting like just to go find one of these other retailers? I want to, I want to change the criteria for that oh. inquiry. Oh yeah, you can go back. Oh yeah, yeah, you can just go back to the data. Right. And then you can just click on that website and change whatever data you right. want in that. Right. Yeah, that's what I said. Okay. So there's really only one, one user. So in other words, where it says beard marketing there, there's only one account for beard marketing. They can use it however they want. Is that right? Yeah. So if beard, okay. So if beard marketing bought our application, they could have the API on multiple pages, right? Right. Yeah. So they would have, they could have beardmarketing.net as a home page. See how many people went to their home page. Then they could have it on their product page. Oh, okay, so, it, so I can do as many. Yeah. You can do as many web pages as you oh, want. Okay. So let's get have as many web pages. Right there. But the, the issue that we ran into for user accounts is for our users. Right. So we could only have 25 users. Right. So, but this, you can have as many web pages here as you want. You can track as many of your different web pages and everything as you yeah. want to track there. And you can name them too to be yeah. you know, right there where it says beard, MKTG. Yeah, you could yeah, say product could, page. Yeah. So, so that just becomes a tracking mechanism for the mm -hmm. inquiries. Yes. So you could make another, could you make another beard with the same URL with a different query? So you could save the query? I mean, yeah, you do. <coughs> that's what I mean, you The best thing would be. Even if it has the same URL so that, and everything. So that you get like multiple responses. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you can date them, you know, say this is one I read. This day, now I wanted to modify that search, but I want to keep my old search. Well, I mean, or even even better, something that we could implement in the future would be just multiple hotspot setting uh, functions, I guess. Okay. So you can, because I think that's that's what you're trying yeah, to say yeah, is that yeah. okay? So you just have more options than just the one thing that you set. Yeah. 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 Okay. For the same URL, that's what I was wondering. Mm -hmm. about. Yeah. Okay. We'll break it if we can. <laughs> yeah. Is that a current? No, go ahead. Is that a current limitation? Is that your your settings? Actually, if, can you pull up the settings again for when you're done with it? What would you like me to get? Is that what you're wanting, the hotspot settings? Yeah, basically. So, you can def can you currently define settings for multiple demographics all separately? Yeah, so if you wanted to, scroll to the bottom. If you wanted to, you can set, see like right now we're pulling age, household income, and population. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to just pull household income, and then you wanted to set up another one and do age, now granted right now, yeah, you would have to do it as multiple web pages, right? Or you would have to run it and then come back to it, change it, and, and have it run some more to get it as separate things. But you can run them individually. You can do two of them. I mean, if you don't want any demographics, you can say, I don't care about the demographics. Now, how, how do you manage the demographics, your target demographics for multiple locations? So, for example, if you've got settings for Chicago and Indianapolis, <coughs> viewing those and managing them separately, for example. Do you, are you saying, like, uh, like have more specific demographics? Like, do you want to be able to sort by gender or something like that, or? Well, s sorry, I, my question wasn't phrased very well. I guess you're selecting target cities, correct? So, 
you can select multiple target cities currently. Is that correct? Per website? Yes. So in essentially, it, in the it, settings, yes. so you could be like, look for Indianapolis? Yeah. Well, no. Yeah, it doesn't, you don't say an actual city. You just say city as the, in the hotspot settings, you just say city as the area. And it automatically will pull together all the different views from different cities. So it'll, it, it's not specific cities, but it's every city, I guess. It's, it'll, it's only so that you can find where the interest is. So rather than being very narrow-minded, like saying that you're going to target a specific city, this is allowing you to see where the interest is. So if there's interest in Indianapolis, you know, I already know that there's interest there. Let's get our product there. Sure. So you've got a threshold. Your threshold yeah, is your list number of visitors. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so basically, when you, when you get more than 10 visitors in a city, you, so your area of interest is, I, I guess, defined by like a, a radius. In yeah, distance. basically. Okay. That's unique visitors. Yeah. Yes. I guess a, a possible feature, obviously there's, there's value in, a lot of value in seeing where you're getting traffic from, but if you wanted to target a new market specifically, let's say your, your marketing plan, you're not doing any marketing in Chicago, mm -hmm. and you want to target Chicago, you could just reverse look up the, you know, the geo coordinates for Chicago and get back the same lead generation without relying on visitors to visit your site from Chicago first. Does that make sense? <coughs> yes. Oh, yeah. I get what he's saying. Having the functionality to, so that you can basically, are you saying so that if you started, so you can have this set up and then see how your marketing campaign is doing there, like once you do start it and see how many people are coming from that area? Is that what you're saying? Well, this could, it could help you set up your marketing campaign for an area. So let's say you have no visitors from a, a location. You could input that as a target location and have it generate all that equivalent lead data for you. So you can versus, search that city. So you can just you can just query a, a particular city yeah. to look for those leads versus waiting for people to come from that area in order to generate the leads. And that was kind of our overarching research question was, um, based on the demographics of hotspots that we've already found, mm -hmm. can we take those demographics and then send them back and pull cities from the database? So kind of like reverse engineer it and, 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 and see if those, like, will those cities uh, yeah. have similar interest patterns that the ones that we've already found do? So you have hits in West Lafayette and Champaign, Illinois. It's a lot like West Lafayette. We can, you know, suggest go look at Champaign, Illinois, and populate a list of similar companies there. Right. Uh, one final thing is some of the demographics you have listed. Sorry, uh, have you considered other demographics like weather demographics, um, actual geo-specific? Mm -hmm. I think that we're going to have to, especially since that's our okay. case study is on the HVAC H things HVAC. and climate's a, a big factor for that. Sure. That's definitely something that we're going to have to look into. And that's where yeah. our research question comes in. Yeah. With that, you know, sales a function of income, number of household uh, members. <coughs> temperature, or you know, time of year, and quarters, and climate of that area. I guess I, you know, this might just be me not understanding, but I, I just haven't had that, that eureka moment as a business owner where I'm like, I have to, I can't live without this, like this is awesome, I love this, and I, like for the city, you know, I think I can put Google Analytics on my product website or my company website at no charge, I can see regional information about who visits it. So if I see that a lot of people are visiting it, visiting from, uh, I don't know, Goshen, Indiana, I could say, I could go to Google Maps and I could say barbershops near Goshen, Indiana, and I could get a whole list of them that I could send information to. So I guess I'm trying to, the, the big thing trying to see where the, like, where the true value is and where, you know, what's that tipping point where, yes, I can do it that way, but you, you should still buy our product because it does, I, I don't know what that... I, for us, I think that the biggest reason that this should be the tipping point is because you could go and put Google Analytics on your site. So now you have to go put Google Analytics on your site. You have to um, get your results back. You have to interpret those results. You have to go search on your Google site for these areas near Goshen. Then you have to find the contact information that you want. For us, it's all automated. 
You put this on your website. It's doing everything. It tells you this is Goshen, Indiana, where you're getting the highest traffic. These are the demographics of this area, and here are the retailers. All you have to do is click a button, and you're there. So I think for us, the reason it should be the tipping point is because it's all automated. It's all doing the work for you. So you set it up, you go on doing your, your company's business, you're focusing on that, and then you can come back and say, well, it's given me three cities that maybe I should actually look at because they're finding interest in it. So in a, like just say, like in any given week, I'm a marketing person, you know, working for my company. In any given week, how many, how many man hours do you think that your product is saving over doing it more than manual effort that I was thinking? I don't know. I don't know. Personally, I feel like it would be a lot because I know the, the, the data that I found is it can take a long time, especially for like, if a business owner goes to a, a marketing place and they try to find the, uh, the list of like potential customers or retailers or whatever, I feel like you're, if you're going through a marketing person, then I feel like you're putting in the time and effort to wait on them to get your list. And then you're also, either they're contacting them or you're contacting them. So I just, I feel, I can't say a specific number because I'm not sure, but I, I personally feel from the research that it's gonna save a lot of time. So hours of time? Hours, definitely. I would see, I think I'd see a lot of value, a lot of time savings for more established companies. If you deploy this for an enterprise, um, it, it, it would save an immense amount of time. I would maybe not just consider it for bootstrapping mm -hmm. startup business, but for very established enterprise as well. Yeah, we were just doing it kind of for the burden of the project. Sure. But, uh, and I think part of the reason that we also looked at bootstrap rather than the larger companies is because a, lar a lot of larger companies <coughs> do have in-house marketing that they already handle and they already have software that they use. So a lot of the larger places aren't going to be looking for a new software when they already they have something. So this may add some component to it, mm -hmm. but not as much as what they're willing to drop their old software or whatever. So I think that's another reason that we kind of looked at a, a smaller bootstrap. Sure. And then what's the message to the retailer? So when you have all this data and you you say, well, okay, we've had 186 visits in this area for, you know, from our website. What's the message to the retailer? Is it, you know, we've had all this interest in the area and you might want to consider stocking our product on your shelves or? I think essentially that's what it is. It's, I mean, if you, so let's just say that you, you're in Lafayette, you've got some sales that you're, you're doing here and then you get this and it says to go to Chicago. Right. Then you can contact the retailers and say, We've already started here in, in Lafayette. We've seen a lot of interest in our product in Chicago, and we want you to stock our product on your shelves. We think that it can do very well in Chicago because we've already seen interest. People are already interested in that area. Mm -hmm. We already have data to show that. Did you mean like a, a conduct like inside of the, um, like the actual application? Like well, sending emails? Not necessarily. I, I figure there might be a marketing person at this business that you that, that's using your product. and. If, if it is the beard marketing and there's you know barber shops in this area that you know your software suggests like this might be a potential uh, avenue for selling your product then what's the message to those people and how do you convince them to you know buy your product or service or stock it and then how do they how do they circle back and close the loop and say you know hey customer you visited this website and expressed interest we wanted to let you know that we now sell that how does that how does that loop get closed I think if it's a small business, you'd be emailing them to like, you wouldn't just have like an automated message where it took you like no time to put any thought or effort into it to try and get a new retailer. So once they give you that information, then you would um, maybe like send them an email and be like, um, we have this new product, uh, we'll let them know if you're interested in it. If they were, then they could shoot you email back. Or the actual loop of the customer currently is not closed though, to answer the question. There's no way for us to currently get back to the customer and say, we saw that you had interest in our product and now our product is close to you here. So maybe as part of the, just thinking out loud, but maybe as part of the service, is, so people have to sign up to use this service, right? So you might have their email address, so it could be a provision that says, you know, hey, let me know if somebody in my area buys this product, or, or I'm sorry, stocks this product, or let me know when this is available in my area. 
I feel like. I think there's a huge so, service opportunity there. Yeah, that, that's right. That's what I think. I think there's also uh, an opportunity for uh, small marketing firms too, for local advertisers that want to, you know, instead of paying Google or having somebody write them something custom, that you have some solution that will at least get them a little further along a little faster. Yeah. Where they work with a lot of small companies. So, so I think that I think there's something there. And we we've gone grossly over, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> there's no group behind us, so. Yeah, I know. So that's the, 11, that's so. the bad news for you. Right? <laughs> so, so, so that's all right. Five minutes, right? The good news right. is, welcome to software development. Uh, these are the kinds of things that you you know you got to have these very lengthy meetings about what if why, and as a group we're getting you know people with uh, interest in investing in this component to understand and, and mentor you, and that's why I was, was glad to see that you got a hold of Joe, and, and so hopefully we can keep this sort of going. Now all you guys are employed, right, or not? You are? Interview on Monday. Interview on Monday. Oh, so did, did you? I thought you were on Monday. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I fly out Monday. So it's Monday. So you two are unemployed? Uh, I should get a response back by IBM yeah. on Friday. Okay. I'm unemployed. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Joe. Go ahead. Go ahead. Tell them what you told me. Yeah. Uh, oh. We're hiring some mobile developers right now if you are interested in that experience. <laughs> there you go. Come talk to us. <laughs> So now that was the bad news. There's the good news. Okay. <laughs> so make something happen. And uh, uh, Larry said to tell you good job. He really appreciates your work. He he had a little parking issue. He said I'm going to have a ticket in about five minutes. So he's got a back he, he got plenty of questions out yesterday. So. Yeah. Yeah. So he got to talk to you. And and from my perspective, I thanks for the work because it's 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 a great start. And I think there is something there. We just have to engage it. So. It was great having Larry do a thing because. Uh, he said that he, to himself that he wasn't very technical, so him being able to, like... He will be. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he said he was able to understand the functionality yesterday, so... Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks, guys. I appreciate well, it. Thank you. Thanks for everybody coming. If anybody wants a, a business card, it's got our web address and stuff on it, to check out our website. Um, we've got a bunch of those up here, so... Yeah. Lunchtime.